Hey Busters, welcome back to another Digimon card game video. So today we'll be, I guess, uh, doing a bit of two different things. Um, one, I'm going to be opening up the uh, Cho Tamer Battle or the Super Tamer Battle exclusive um, store, half storage box and card set, as well as just going over um, what pretty much uh, how the Super Tamer Battle uh, actually worked here in Japan, as this it was uh, the actually first big uh, Japanese event for the Digimon card game as all previous ones, the DC1 and the 3-on-3 uh, three -three battles were um, either cancelled, the 3-on-3 three -three, because it was held in Tokyo and Corona, or the DC1 which was um, half cancelled as it was um, kind of like you had Kanto and Kansai, so the Tokyo area and Osaka area, uh, various stores did it and then they had their champions play online, but because of Corona the Tokyo parts could not participate, so it was just kind of locked down. So this was the first time we could do a full event, um, at least here in Kanto and Tokyo. So I was available for that, which I just want to go over my thoughts and opinions of that um, in the later half, but we'll be opening up this first. But yeah, so here it is. So. Um, basically, the Cho Tamer battle was the first big large event um, in Tokyo. It was um, 320 players. You had to enter the lottery to enter. Um, they did um, the way they did it. It was quite um, professional, I guess. Uh, you had to go to their official site and um, build your deck and then register it. So they kind of locked your deck in about. Um, they kind of messed up originally. You had to lock it in about a week before. Then later on Twitter and email, they said uh, they actually messed things up, so we had a chance to um, re-update our decks. And I think the deadline was Wednesday, so you had about three days before the tournament itself to figure out what you wanted to play and lock it in. But yeah, so for today, we're just going to open this first to show you guys off. So this is a half storage box. Um, this is exclusive for this super tamer battle. Um, this event was only held in Tokyo um, yesterday, so September uh, September 17, 2022. Um, it was limit two per customer, and they were selling each one for uh, 3,500 yen or 3,500 yen. Um, I bought two because, of course, um, well, <laughs> not because you scalp these, but you can make quite a bit of profit. Like um, on the day, the first one I saw um, in each set, you get six different cards. You get a uh, starter. Starter deck Greymon, Security Attack plus one Greymon, uh, Booster set two um, Holy Drama that recovers two. You get Dark Dramon from set four. You get um, Banjo Stingmon from set three for the green. Um, this was black, purple, purple get up. Uh, uh, purple got you um, Rasenmon get Komod from set eight. Um, and what was the last color I'm missing? Blue, I think. Ah, blue. Yeah, blue was a Vmon from set. Eight, I think, the one that lets you search with the armor. So yeah, um, quite good. And the thing was, everyone thought it would just be the normal foiling or normal, but they actually went out of their way because it's so expensive to make them each a uh, secret rare textured style. So that's why I got two. Um, but yeah, the gray mon was selling for a hundred bucks. So pretty much each of these selling for about three times as much. So I'm glad I picked up two to help fund my co cost of training down. It wasn't much. It was like six bucks one way. So like twelve bucks up uh, there and back but yeah let's get this open so it's like this um this time they sold it with instructions on how to build it at the back uh really the storage box is only right here and then you get the cards here um i probably won't build the storage box as i don't need it and i have some so i'm just probably gonna just uh, ship it out and sell it so there and then they just uh, be careful on that so that's pretty much it uh yeah so it says right here um, in, within the set, you get six cards, cards, six types with each four of each and a storage box. But yeah, it is quite nice. Um, lots of people, when we were, we were very happy that they made it so compact um, because usually they don't. So don't even need scissors. Let's open this up. While I won't build it, I will show you guys around it. So plastic is there. But I do want to look so... I do like how it says Super Tamer Battle here. Nice gloss cardboard. And then on this one side, it just says the Digimon card game. And I think the other side, it had Dark Dramon. No. So maybe it was on the back because uh, they did have this um, showing all full. So I think Dark Dramon is here. I do kind of like that design. Dark Dramon here where it's kind of like a, like a holographic style, but like faded blue. So it does look quite nice with the cool digital lines like that so 
it is a half storage box so if in case you're wondering for those who do want to get this um, here is a Digimon memory gauge it is a uh, one just short of two cards wide but you know they do fit these um if i re recall these do fit um these with sleeves so if you put sleeves they are fine for sleeves um half storage box i think they'll fit about i can't remember i think these would fit about two deck boxes so like that so yeah like one two deck boxes and then a couple maybe like 10 more sleeve cards so yeah so there's that and so they hold it like this so look at that so yes that foiling for these guys are amazing so they taped it here and it's here so i do like how they package this for sure we'll just push this out remove the tape here and then i'm gonna angle <laughs> the camera down busters it's like so for you guys to see but yes definitely like the way they're doing it so i do like the plastic here too and the sheet of paper and let's just remove the tape but you get four of each and you can already see there is a nice line so they locked it in quite nicely so they um i always feel like they don't even need the middle part to lock it in but just to prevent it from getting any stickiness on it but yoink, there we go so look at that so this look at that foiling i do like the flame foiling of this so the cool thing is so yes even um i would say pretty much um here in japan because uh for those who do follow um we did get the starter set 11 which gave you reprints of this but for sure like um i think they say these are like 15 bucks a pop in for the english version because of how rare it is um because you can't get the start red Gaia force and everyone wants it and the, if they reprint this and it's limited that's gonna be real but look at that nice foiling textured foiling i love these so like the digimon is always like smooth and then the effect over it with flames the numbers god we love these so yeah definitely worth the money for these guys but yeah so you get four of these which is amazing and the quality of these not too bad but honestly you know there's always gonna be white so you get four of these bad boys so as always I don't think I need to explain it, but it's a 4,000. The great thing is it's a security attack plus one. No. So it's nice like that. So let's just put this next to Buster Coon. So you have that. Um, currently, I mean, the price dropped down, but um, yesterday, like pretty much during the battle, someone bought it and sold it. Um, they sold ten, uh, four. So one set pack, set of four for a 10,000 yen. So this was only 35 for the entire set, and they already sold this for pretty much three times the amount with leftovers. Next is Vmon, which um, at the highest sold a play set for 7,000. 7, so yeah, this thing really sold itself off. But currently, um, surprisingly, not many people were reselling. I'm guessing people bought one for themselves, as well as one for friends uh, who, who couldn't make it. So yeah, next you get the Vmon. So this is the... BT81, which lets you uh, on play open four and add one uh, dual colored card to your hand. So I really like the V my hitting Numamon and look. So you got that boom foiling. Funny enough, I kind of wish they kind of put it more towards the head to give it more of an impact, but still, it's really nice. Just to show you guys a foiling there. Real nice. And you get four of these bad boys. Next up, you get four Holy Dramons. So they are quite stuck a bit together. Hmm. That's interesting. I got three. So therefore, I should have one here. Right? Yes. So here you get 
for Holy Dramans from BT2. Um, if I recall a few, well, maybe a month back, I did sell a playset of these for like 600 yen. So it is still, for Uncommon, it is still quite valuable. And this one is the full art, which looks really nice. Let's see how the foiling is done. Oh, that's nice. So this time the foiling is kind of like, like a glowing holy flame foiling. Uh, the texture is a bit hard to see there, so. But you can, you can kind of see, look at that. That looks nice. Oh, that really looks, that looks really cool. And I really love this card. I run this card in so many decks just as like a one-off because recovering two, giving the opponent 10 memory is, you know, not good. But if, if they have nothing that can attack you, dropping this, you're safe for the turn for the most part, unless they got something with a rush, you're safe. And recovering two is huge. So this is a really good card. So yeah, uh, currently I think uh, this one sold for a playset for 2000 yen here. Of course, these prices will probably um, go up as more and more people start selling. Surprisingly, like I said, not many people were. I expected a lot more, um, but probably because there was actually less. Um, I did notice when I signed in, which I'll go over later, of the 320 people, not everyone could join. Some people for, uh, didn't uh, fail to register their deck and um, some other stuff. So it was definitely not a full 320. So for the green, we got Bancho Stingmon from set. Um, three the foiling here has got some lightnings lightning balls that's nice look at that really love this style of foiling right so this is step three um unfortunately it's not that you i would say it's very usable card however it's not good enough to it's definitely run in like one off however a uh, great effect but currently um here in japan with the ex3 meta not many people do run all the way to level six and if they do they're rarely available for you to just attack for this effect but it's effect of piercing and uh, when you attack something with over 12,000 dp get 7,000 and plus security attack plus two so it's pretty much 16,000 three check it's gonna survive anything so it's still a decent card. Um, this one is sold a playset for a thousand yen. So, but I personally like it, so I might just keep this one. Although I bought two sets, so definitely want to recover, recover some cost, so I can buy more sets. Uh, this one I actually just sold uh, a playset for two thousand. Um, I think the day before the first person who you know. Uh, whoever sells it first always gets a bit higher. Um, it sold for 3,000, so I just lowered mine to 2222 uh, because of 10%, uh, was it, uh, usage fees and stuff, so it's just an even 2,000. But yeah, so I like this art. It's in a nice shattered foil. So yeah, Dark Dramon. This Dark Dramon in the full art does look nice with that lightning there. It looks really nice. And of course, with the EX3, uh, some people want to bling out their decks. You know? And at five dollars each, that's not too bad. You put one for collection and the three in the deck, you know. So quite a good card too in the new, um, was it D Brigade decks? And last but not least, the least uh, popular. This one sold for a thousand yen for a full set of Rasenmon Gekko mode or Rage mode. So funny enough, like <laughs> this is full art. But the original card itself from BT8 was basically full art. Like, because it, you couldn't really see the edges. So it was pretty much this just a nice full version. And let's see the foiling here. Interesting. Ah, okay. So, like, you have him going. And then, you know, it's when it's attacking, it's got the Resen or the uh, Spiral Energy. The Spiral Energy here has kind of like brush stroke waves as the textured foiling. It's kind of hard to see. So there's that. And sorry, Master, that's just the sound here in Japan. That means it's five o'clock here. But yeah, so you get textured here. The lightning, you know, is textured. And I really love how only the Digimon itself is kind of glossed. And then they put layered textured, textured layering. So like clearly like this part is over uh, the energy and the energy here is underneath the lightning. So I really like that, but yeah. Funny enough, this card itself isn't that good, but if in a Rasenmon deck, it's not bad, you know? It costs three, you attack, you hit one, evolve, 
and then you hit another two. So if you have something with security attack plus one, that's two hits, evolve for free, because its attack does let you evolve for free, become active and hit for another two. So it's an instant four. Or if you got them down to three, an instant win. So it is not bad, so. And that's it, Busters. Uh, that is pretty much uh, what you get in this 3,500 yen uh, half box set. You get four great, four starter deck uh, security attack plus one gray mons, four of the uh, dual colored searching v-mons, four of the recover two holy, holy dramons, four uh, a bunch of sting mons, four dark dramons with um, blitz or I guess Rush, I think Rush in English, and four of the rest in Gekko modes. Uh, so in other words, you get um, four times six, 24 cards, and the box for only 3,500 yen, like even at basically, and these are all like textured, so at the worst, you sell each of these for 200 yen a pop, that's still, uh, what is it, 24, 48, you're already making a profit for this. So yeah, I would definitely say um, for those who uh, in English, if you get a chance, if you want as a collector's, I would definitely say get it. Um, for those wondering if they, who like who aren't in Japan but like collecting, um, this is the I'm just telling you that is the current price for these. But yeah, it is definitely limited. So like I said, um, definitely not 300 people. Uh, three maybe a bit more than 300. I'm guessing less than 20 dropped out, and lots of people bought two. I did see them while on the line. Uh, you can only get um some only bought one. So uh, hold on, busters. Yeah, so basically, um, if we were to average it, we'll say 300, and at, so in other words, at most, there is only about 600 of these sets in circulation currently. Um, they did say that, you know, they, um, this set is not limited to selling here, they may sell it online and stuff. Um, I think generally they say that it's if um, they expected like a certain amount of sold and they have lots left over, they will sell it, kind of like how the Digifest, the memorial set, they sold at Digifest, but because of Corona, possibly not as many people went, so they could sell that or give some stuff away as extras. But um, I definitely think they definitely sold their target amount, so I don't think they will be selling these again, which makes these quite rare in terms of uh, how much is circulated uh, here in Japan. But yeah, so that's basically it. So one more time just to go over all the cards for you guys. So yeah, so here we have the Get Koresen Mon Get Komod, four of those. You get four of the Dark Dramons. Put the four thing there. You get four, oops, of the Bancho Sting Mons. Like so. Four thing there. You get four of the Holy Dramons. Really like I really like the holy dramons, like the because they put several like dual layers, so it goes like so you can say it kind of moves like three layers. I really like that design. You get four of the V mons. Oh, Buster, don't fall asleep now. And the money card. Four of the flame textured gray mons. So yeah, there's that. So that's, oops, busters, we'll leave. So that is there. So I'm just gonna move these out of the way. There go, busters. So I'm just gonna move Buster off to, out of the way. So yeah, and this, um, so pretty much the next part of this video, um, that's pretty much it going. So, you know, for those who are interested, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about how the um, Super Tamer battle went from here. So if you guys are, um, only interested in that uh, thanks for watching and um, hope to see you guys again on my next Digimon card game video which I'll probably only just go over like decks I've been using and just some fun gimmick decks but yeah so from this point on I'm just gonna be talking about uh, my experience with the uh, super tamer battle so yeah so first off it was a really fun game so uh, when we went um, it was an official tournament um, everyone got one of these I was player number 24 here so yeah um, basically, they had uh, this, and then they had a couple more pieces of paper in it. Um, one was a QR code for we scan it, and then if you just answer it on a survey, um, they basically gave you a pack of the special promotion pack 2022, which is really nice because currently a special uh, promotion pack, um, what is it, volume three right now, and I'm really glad they gave this. 
because it does come with the promos Gilmon. Gilmon here is currently worth like a thousand yen each. Gabumon's about 500 and the other ones are pretty much useless. Um, I opened a lot of these. I only got one Gilmon, which sucks because I got like four of the Heracles, uh, Kudari, Kusarimons, Wizermons, Kudamons. Like only Gabumon I got three and Gilmon I got one. So either that it's rare or I was just unlucky. So, but yeah, happy about that. And the next one is um, the Gunslinger event. So the Gunslinger event is basically um, for those who pretty much um, how they work is. Um, let me just show these off. So I'll just show you guys later. So uh, first off, you get these. Um, basically for the event, you had it. You had a number. And this was to prove it. I do like the card like that. And then this was the official card. So you had to give these. So you had to line up give it to a worker and the worker will check your number and check your name off a list which allows you to buy up to two sets of the previous um super tamer battle box set and then after that they mark how much you bought so in other words they clearly they go out of the way to limit exactly how many you can buy so there's that and then of course you have the tournament which um i don't know how it's done in the west and honestly this is the first time i've actually been to like a large organized tournament like this here in japan i've seen some large ones like about pokemon and stuff but this one was definitely much much different um basically when you went in they give you this um you basically had to just scan this qr code and it brings you to a website uh that handles how pretty much you do the thing so it pretty much shows you like this um, on the website, you can choose like online log login, but you didn't need that. Basically, you just click it and it goes like here. It shows you a screen and it says currently for the first set, first match. Um, you just look down here, you find your own number and then it'll tell you who you were up against as well as, uh, well, you find your own number and then it'll say you and who your verse is. So like here example, um, if I was player number three, I'm number three and I would be versus player number 40 at table 31 whereas say player eight would be at table five versus player number 15 so that's how they kind of did it and then it's just first set and then after you finish playing um, you go to the screen and then only pretty much the winner will click it and you can either choose between the options of you win or both lose um, yeah, uh, because of how it was done, there was a 25 minute time limit. So if you did not win, unlike previous tournaments here in Japan uh, for Digimon, where it was time over, they always had... <laughs> Actually here in Japan, um, when you went over time, they always went to, all right, uh, whoever has the most security left wins. If you had the same amount of security, um, I think next they went to whoever had the most Digimon on the board wins. And then if you still had the same amount over there, you went, then you went down to, I think, um, whoever had the most cards left in their deck. And then after that, if that's still the, somehow the same, then you just rock, paper, scissors. So they always, there was no tie. However, this time when time ran out, it was both considered a loss, which really sucks because um, I played six rounds. Um, yeah, so basically they do, um, you get scored at the end, which... Uh, I'll show you. And I'll, actually, let me show you now. So yeah, so here's my phone. So basically, uh, it's already finished. But basically, this was how it was done. I was player number 24. This is the first set, right? So it should show my... I think maybe because I only got up to... Ah, so that's why. I'm um, sorry. Player 1. So uh, page 1. So I was player 24. Um, it's no longer showing, but here... So up to here, 24, I was versus player number 356, right? Uh, table five, right? And then when you win, you just click it. You can't really click it anymore. Um, actually, I guess it's over, maybe? Let me check. So at the, oh, so this one at the end showed the, so, okay. So here it generally showed up. I think um, basically your overall score. I did okay, not terrible. So, so there it is, right? Wait, so number 20 so I gotta find it um I basically got 12 points I think the winner got 21 so uh, let's just let's see how it's there you go so that was pretty much it I was 24 
I'm not sure if it still runs. Maybe not, but let's see if I can find myself. Ah, so this is the ranking. So yeah, I was definitely. Oh, I was. I think it was more in like near the end. Twenty twenty-seven. I guess I didn't even make the cutoffs. <laughs> right. Oh wait. Although this, I was at the seventh really. So, oh, I didn't. Uh, actually, I never made it to the sixth round, a uh, seventh round. So that's probably what I got cut off. But yeah, so that's how um, they kind of did it. Um, it would say their stuff and the points. Uh, I pretty much ended up with twelve points because at the end I had three wins, one loss. My first game was a loss, which I definitely messed up on, um, which I can explain later. And then I had two time overs. One of them was kind of a. Uh, it, was, it could have gone both ways. The opponent was running a weird deck where they just had a blocker I couldn't go over because I was running um, uh, an armored build deck. And then the other one, I was going to win, but I just didn't have enough time to get my final hits in. It was the opponent's turn. Once he passed, it would have been my turn and I could have gotten a hit in. He was running a Mastimon um, security control deck so I he kept recovering over and over again and then I just didn't have enough time to end it but yeah so I had three wins two ties and then one loss and honestly I definitely made a misplay in the first set um the first opponent was running a metal garurumon deck and I don't I somehow just got in my head that like passing one memory even though he had a memory boost was enough to keep me alive so instead of evolving into my magnamon and then it straight into my magnamon x um because that's basically if i did that i should have survived because magnum guru mon decks uh they don't have any real removals had i gone that i might have been able to win but i don't know why i just set an extra armor past one and then he basically destroyed my board and it was kind of over although i did start with a bad hand so there was that but still definitely a misplay on my part however you know honestly i didn't expect to really win this so and yeah um also i also knew i couldn't win because uh i when i registered my deck i actually put ice wall in it and i was going to switch it out but i actually forgot to remove my blue memory boost for an ice wall so right at the beginning i already knew i like i technically couldn't win because my register deck and the deck i brought was actually different so yeah that kind of sucked but it was definitely a fun experience i definitely did a lot better than i thought with three wins um but yeah so i just want to go over that a bit but yeah in a bit um so there was that was basically it so and this one was a gunslinger event where uh, after people uh, basically you keep playing and then if you fall below a certain threshold for points um, on the app when you look for your name it no longer shows up because pretty much you are never not in the running anymore so they kind of kicked you out because you'd played seven sets and then only the out of 320 max people only the top 16 made it to the final um, tournament bracket so there was that so for people who were waiting could use this and play three rounds uh, win or lose and then at the end you get a tamer pack 13 um i left early because i didn't so i just did one i didn't really need it because it was just this so that's why i did that um, but the cool thing was um for those who watch the uh digimon card game uh family the youtube video um the the, the members from rocks uh kind of like the guy who, uh with the blonde hair and the really funny guy with the short buzz cut um who does the vital brace and stuff um they were there as the uh, official spokesperson speakers so that was really cool so you had a chance to play against them and unlike other tournaments uh this time they let us actually keep this battle arena which is really nice uh the play mat so i just want to show it off it is just a generic one it is quite nice though uh, so these are a perfect fit for each card so you can kind of see like here is a official sleeve with double sleeve you can see quite wide enough for like one two three four on the board with three different stacks so it is quite nice that they allowed us to take it and they also gave us a really small and pl uh, crappy um memory memory market which i'll show hold on which was basically just this yeah it was uh, talking with some of the players you know they were like oh for such a you know i guess a prestigious event or such the first event you know this marker was quite crappy we were hoping for something a little bit better but mm, i didn't know for the evolution cups uh 
they basically they gave these but you weren't allowed to take it home or the challenge cup but this time they let us take it home which was quite nice definitely like it and lots of people had the um the comedians rocks uh, actually sign it so that was pretty cool but yeah that was basically the event um it started at uh check-in started at like nine and the game uh official started at 10 30 and i did up to round six which um ended at about one ish for me so it was only 25 minutes each so but yeah that's basically it but yeah so um definitely really fun lots of decks um i f the first one was a metal garurumon deck second person ran a Greymont tribal Greymon deck third person uh he ran that weird uh ragna lord mon deck which um he just hard played a cross five with locker twelve thousand. i couldn't get over that even with my magna which was why he, he could survive for so long i always i thought it was a cross heart deck but and then i swung with magna mon x and then i hit um, what is it, Bree Waymon, which was like, what? <laughs> so yeah, it was quite hard to, it was actually, uh, he recovered and stuff, so quite a surprise deck, that one I couldn't win. Oh, it was up, to, but he had like um, Mechanorimon, and then none of my armor types could go through it, so he it was pretty much a good counter against my deck. Then the next one, it was a Jessmon, um, which was a hard fight, but I lucked out in the end, Pretty much on the last turn I had, I managed to draw my Dexmon, which wiped him out because he had like five to six Sistermons out. And he knew that, so he was swinging with Sistermons just to get rid of them against my Megdemon X. But he kept some and then boom, destroyed everything. I got the win for that. Then the next one was the Mastimon deck, with a, uh, which because I timed out, I over and I couldn't move on to... Uh, the seventh set, so that was that. But yeah, so for those wondering, um, yeah. Uh, for in the end, the Super Tamer first place was Cross Hearts, as well as second place was also Cross Hearts. So, um, funny enough, I didn't play against any Cross Hearts, and I, I would say there was definitely a lot of Cross Heart decks. I saw at least four, and just because they won, I wouldn't say that like again people could, like lots of people online complain like oh Cross Hearts over overpowered this and that. It is, but it's not without its weaknesses. However, the only thing is the its weakness is specifically black deck specifically mega Drum mega and black war Greymon, and without running those all other decks have a hard time or need to play around it so but definitely i wouldn't say that was it's a good indicator of how strong it is but definitely not to the point where everyone online at least on reddit keeps saying like let's overpower it's over is it strong yes but is it unbeatable no you have to learn to play around and build your board correctly so there's that but yeah, so just uh, for also that because this is the EX3 meta um, for those wondering like this deck from the BT9 I think Magnamon X Magnamon X was 8 maybe 9 what was it BT9s so this deck from BT9 meta is more than enough to hold its own But just to go over I basically ran three Upas and one Shaoman to give your flame Dramons 9,000 when you were attack um, For the deck it was a basic um, I didn't really break it down, but you know, you run full sets of all the armors. Um, I run two fire rockets just to get some early hits in. Three V jammings. I would have had four, but I just didn't have four copies. I gave some to my friends. Hammer spark. Um, lots of people don't run anymore, but I do love hammer spark because when you're hit, when they choke you at one, having this lets you switch evolve into it, and has actually saved me multiple times where I use this one extra memory evolve into a stingmon or rydramon to give me my green that i need to run um megadeth um chimeramons is there i ran these for res resetting but yeah just a basic build not nothing too i ran one of these i was thinking maybe four chimeramons but having a dual hits was always good you know jamming but nothing too fancy like if and then i got three megadeths here so th these were good. Um, honestly, after playing, I do realize actually more than Mega Deaths, um, these Grand Soul from set 10, the or 9, the Bloom Lordmon option card would be better because I pretty much against the guy with the uh, janky deck, like I kept bouncing his Dexmon and he would, and knowing him, he would just put it back on, which really hurts. So returning to deck is definitely better. Um, that one is a seven or eight cost, but it's minus two if you have two or more Digimon on the board, which isn't too hard for armor decks. So I would say possibly remove, uh, switch these out. Yes, you give them a bit more memory. However, 
being able to return it to the deck denying them from their hand is a huge benefit so just throwing that out there for those who are building it but yeah nothing too fancy same basic build as most decks would and dexmon definitely a vip for against uh jessmon and boards uh spam boards like people are saying oh you need it you need it yet yeah, i would definitely say because i had it i there were like two games i won because i had this uh, purely because I, it helped me uh, devolve and remove them and they had lots of tamers which made it like a low eight cost or five coster which is really good however unlike my, what most people say i wouldn't say this is like you must have it it's a great card no doubt it'll definitely help you it's never not going to have its uses in the deck however for some decks you just don't care about removal you know it's basically a defensive card you can think of it like this either if you're in a winning stance you don't need this it's not going to help you if you're losing definitely good and if you're even well at that point it does both so it's pretty much at the point of it's good it's great but not required as lots of people are complaining saying like oh i don't want to play the card game anymore because now you got staples that are like 60 dollars you don't need it is, is just what i'm trying to say it's definitely good but not required in any builds especially in the game where you got security and lots of removals and stuff so just wanted to say that but yeah, Buster, that's basically it um, for this part of the video. I um, hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you wanted to know more about uh, what kind of decks I was running against, or at least here in Japan, the EX3 meta, um, what I would recommend against certain decks or like the weaknesses so you can prepare for the English meta, uh, please let me know down in the comment section below, and I will be sure back to get back to you on that. As always, thanks for watching. And this is Buster Queen here, off to find some spiky seeds.